Catastrophism is the study of horrendous events that punctuate the normally calm and benign earth we have known all of our lives. Catastrophism was nearly dead. The fire was nearly out. Over the last few decades, the few researchers who kept the dimming ember from extinguishing have watched one of the most discussed scientific topics over the last few centuries become nearly taboo in academic literature, and the coverage of the topic marred by fanatical claims and even more fanatical characters. But the field has endured an incredible resurgence since 2018, with new revelations about the past events, new scientific discoveries of what's ongoing now, and the long-needed coalescence of many scientific fields required to understand Earth's catastrophe cycle. The work of modern catastrophists stoking those dying embers deserves to be collected and honored. Today, we can finally answer a challenge levied over a hundred years ago by one of the most prominent researchers in the field. Explain all the evidence associated with these catastrophes. The technology needed to track the next one is here now, and it is telling a terrifying story of the near-term future. Earth enjoys long periods of time molded by the slow crawl of wind, water, and known geologic processes. These eras are punctuated by a cyclical catastrophe. There are three critical aspects to the field of catastrophism. Analyzing the evidence of the past events, trying to explain their mechanism of operation, and then trying to predict the next one. This is the most important news story not being covered. One of the most important things you can wrap your head around. We have two books on this topic, The Next End of the World, describing pretty much all of the evidence in those three vectors we mentioned a moment ago. But because there was so much progress made in the academic literature, touching every aspect of the past and ongoing version of the catastrophe, we had to write a supplement and update the story. If you don't want to get the books, we have a free playlist you can watch, the Earth Disaster Playlist, and it's listed below the video. But either way, this is the most important scientific topic any of us can learn about in terms of understanding the history of our world, our species, and what's going on right now and is going to lead into in the very near future. This is a video that we made a couple of months ago, and it is a qualitative look at some of the disaster aspects. For more on the quantitative, the peer-reviewed elements, check out our books or that disaster playlist. But for here, a bit more of a cinematic introduction and preview of our near-term future. Earth enjoys long, quiet eras commanded by the slow grind of wind, rain, and geology. These periods are punctuated by a recurring catastrophe. We're coming to the end of one of these calm periods, and a disaster is coming. By combining millennia of evidence, centuries of study, and the modern capabilities of technology, we can answer the challenge to explain all the evidence of Earth's disaster cycle, and we have all the tools to track the next one. We have dozens of videos on this topic, including a full movie, follow-up breakthroughs, and seen a shift in the peer-reviewed literature that seamlessly blends with the paradigm. Today, we're not going over papers or the science behind the events or the cycle or their individual mechanisms of action. We're going to lay out the order of events we most expect to happen and offer our best constrained timelines for each. The listing of the events and their timelines is most helpful but only with the appropriate understanding of what each actually is and its significance. So let me tell you a story first. Before any of you were born, the leading edge of the galactic current sheet arrived at our solar system. It began what will finally present a 10% change in interstellar density and the galactic magnetic reversal. The sun announced the arrival with a super flare. 
Early solar scientists tied a massive sunspot group to a geomagnetic disaster unheard of at the time. In 1859, the Virgin Electric Age was raised, literally, to the ground, as the Carrington event solar storm surged electric current through the planet that would not only set telegraph wires on fire, but would induce the beginning of the modern magnetic excursion of Earth. The Earth's field began shifting, the climate began warming, the magnetic field began weakening, the poles shifting faster and faster. It would be more than a hundred years before we'd realize that the other planets were changing too, seemingly accelerated of late, and we would wait just as long to learn that the stars in line with the center of the galaxy were performing record outburst activity, one after another, in a line, right at the sun, and were next. It would be 2020 before we learned that the sun's coronal magnetic fields were reacting, and the chemistry of its atmosphere was beginning to change, most notably in the helium. Thus far, the changes we see from the ground are more due to Earth's changing magnetic field and its effect on the upper atmospheric lens through which we view the sun, such that the once yellow sun now looks more white at greater and greater angles of the day. I know many remember the look of the yellow sun. I'm just old enough to remember it looking white near the noon position and thinking, maybe it's just too bright to see the yellow properly way up there. That's not what this is. The first horseman, dressed in white, wearing a crown at the top of the sky. That takes us from 1859 to today. And the big question is, what happens next? The most likely answer is that a significant solar flare, perhaps not even as great as the Carrington event, will impact Earth in the coming years as our planet's magnetic field continues to weaken and will be enough to destroy the electrical age once and for all. A big enough solar storm means every copper wire melts, every grid is gone, many buildings burn down, there is no power, gasoline, ATMs, banks, grocery, refrigeration, natural gas, heat, AC, no water unless you have a manual well, no factories to rebuild, no vehicles to transport, no 911. With Earth's field weakening, this is by far the most likely candidate to begin the next level series of challenges. And when the internet is a memory, you'll have to watch the skies, the clouds, and the sun. You'll have to watch nature, the animals. The more you can recognize abnormal behavior, the better. Then again, you'll be growing and canning or foraging or hunting for your food, quite busy, and battling the elements like they did before time was time. Most of us will be in the same state as many of the creatures who depend on the field, completely lost, lucky to get where we need to go. This period could last for years. If the sunspot cycle delivers that blast to Earth, we could have a decade of surviving something between the Stone Age and the Bronze Age. But then one day, as the survivors are getting into a groove, those chemical changes on the sun will begin to manifest through to the visible wavelengths as the second horseman arrives and the civility of all who are left is challenged, if not outright stolen. This will test people's will, their character, and their faith. When the sun's atmosphere completely darkens, the upper corona and the sun's version of the Van Allen belts will be the only thing shining. It may just be the outer circles of the Taurus as in the plasma discharge Z-pinch, or it may be some visible ring around the black sun as one might envision its version of the Van Allen belts. The third horseman's scales of justice will tip and teeter to the sides of the sun above all. Then, when the light and solar wind energy overcomes its shell, through the dust and gas and plasma of the long period recurrent solar micronova, we will find the final horseman in a familiar pale hue, but hell follows with him. The blast itself creates a titanic outburst of light across the spectrum and cosmic rays following right on their heels. The light arrives in eight minutes, but has the potential to burn the sun-facing region directly looking at the sun at that time. The high-energy proton cosmic ray storm that ensues will be an invisible component of the disaster, as if anyone could take their eyes away from what would be coming right at us at that time. These cosmic rays integrate with the Earth's magnetic field and may begin the turning over of the Earth via the full planet electromagnetic insult. But before long, the actual shell arrives, and it arrives with the smallest and most energetic parts impacting first, 
a mega CME shockwave that compresses the Earth's sun-facing fields while surging them, creating the arc discharge others call the thunderbolt of the gods. There should also be a discharge out the other side, and perhaps the poles as well. This is more than just a planetary-level lightning strike and discharge. It sucks the water where it wishes, and triggers incredible tsunamis from that effect, and from the seismicity induced by its effect on underground water, metal, and crystals like olivine, which translocate upon discharge. This outstanding attraction to current can disrupt atmospheric density equilibrium as well, and depressurize parts of the world, sucking down stratospheric air, instantly freezing the surface, while frozen waters and glaciers and mountains of ice chunks from the modern poles could be cascading from their places into those same areas. The wind will enhance the tsunamis and storms, and all while something even more horrifying is happening below our feet. The volcanoes will begin to go off as the electromagnetic insult unlocks the low-velocity zone, induces through the large, low-shear-velocity provinces, and triggers the kick of Earth's magnetic field through its reversal process, and as the world sways like a drunkard, tilting as Einstein, Cuvier, DeLuc, and, according to Major White, how the Pentagon and USCIA believe it will tilt, 90 degrees, back and forth each cycle, alternating to put the poles cyclically in the same places, but in between, in the transition, a disaster. As the tsunamis are rolling and the Earth is tilting, the heaviest aspects of the Micronova shell arrive, the impactors. Some are asteroids pushed out of normal orbits, some are plasmic forms, cooled and congealed from the Micronova shell itself as it travels through space. The Sun has been hidden from Earth this entire time since the Micronova eruption, and even after it begins to shine on us again, the dust from the nova, the volcanic aerosols, and the water vapor produced by the event will cloud out Earth's atmosphere and continue to rapidly cool the planet. As has been the case every time before, however, 12,000 years ago in Gothenburg, 24,000 years ago in Lake Mungo, 36,000 years ago in Mono Lake, and before that in Lachamp, Vostok, Toba, and Blake, humans will be left on almost every continent as though the torrents and winds and impactors were somehow attracted to unlucky areas while others seem spared. The sun will be flaring at very intense levels at this time due to the micronova shell release effect on the corona and the photosphere. And the rapid ice melt due to those solar flares is what has been identified by Dr. Peratt, Dr. Schock, and now even Randall Carlson, and takes only a few weeks to perhaps only a few days time after that rapid cooling. The cycle has reset, and we try to do better next time. Now, let's see that story again in list form, and go over the timelines of each of these events in order as we most expect them to happen. Right now, we are in that first stage as we described it. The galactic sheet front boundary triggered the 1859 solar storm in the beginning of the magnetic excursion at Earth. We know today that the nearby stars, planets, and the sun are changing with us. The next up event is likely to be the solar kill shot, the technological disaster that steals our modern society from us, sending us back into survival mode. That is a very real chance of being this sunspot cycle in just the coming years. We had a number of close calls last sunspot cycle, and the field is not getting any stronger. After there aren't any electric screens to watch anymore, we'll be watching the weather and the animals change, and with it, the solar changes begin to manifest at those visible scary levels, the reddening and the full darkening, progressing to these stages, likely in the 2030s. The solar micronova itself is next, blasting off the shell, darkening the sun, and bringing as drastic a change as the solar kill shot, and more. Until we see how it progresses, the timelines here are difficult, but it's fair to assume that Earth's weakening field is a fair approximation and that one points to the 2030s to 2040s for the reversal point. When the micronova happens, the cosmic rays begin, the sun-facing quarter burns, and a few hours later, the shell impact occurs at Earth, delivering the arc discharge, the winds, the depressurization and rapid freeze, the tsunamis, earthquakes, and all while within just minutes, the induction is producing that electromagnetic insult to the core. Whether via torque to the entire system, effects on the LLSVPs, 
or via unlocking of the crust at the low velocity zone, the Earth turns over, bringing more tsunamis, quakes, and volcanoes. The cold sets in deeply thereafter, almost immediately in a days-long global night. But outgassing and solar flaring quickly begin to reverse the process, leaving those who survive the gauntlet to ease back into a calmer period after only a few weeks. There will be melt-driven flooding, crustal settling quakes and tsunamis and volcanoes and more extreme climate and weather swings than we see now, but it will pale in comparison to what the previous years have brought them, and especially the previous few days. Every one of us is descended from survivors, who are descended from survivors before them and survivors before them. We will be left on almost every corner of the globe, even if those corners aren't where they are now. More resources can be found below the video, new updates every single day. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.